Hey everyone, Castlein here, also known as Tarion, if you prefer to call me that. Welcome. I'm doing a tutorial thing. I've tried to record this several times, and uh, first time, audio didn't pick up so well. Second time, I wanted to die, and seven billion other times where I just keep messing this part up. So, yes, this is a voiceover over me texturing a nonsense model basically it is a model I've been putting together for no real reason other than just to make it I am a genius aren't I well uh, to give you an idea of how I texture stuff uh, I don't really use a whole lot of base or pre-made textures the only ones I have are this mail, uh, which I got from some model in Divide and Conquer. Don't remember which one. I did modify it, so it's darker, uh, and I have a linen texture, which is here. It's always red, because the actual image was red linen. Don't remember where I got it, really. Um, and I use it for, well, those two things. I use it for mail-in fabric. Uh, but when it comes to metal, actually, or even leather, I actually just make the texture from a base color. So there's no projecting a steel texture from an image or leather. Uh, so yeah, it's as simple as that. And uh, it's... Uh, multiple step process it's a pain in, in the absolute ass but it is kind of worth it so I sped up the footage here because it would have been over 20 minutes and I don't want to suffer but we're gonna put a overlay layer we're gonna duplicate that several times and then we're going to first put a white rim with this first overlay. This is basically going to be our uh, rolled edge or safety rim. You see this on a lot of helmets, pieces of armor. If it's going to be in contact with the actual person and it's going to be, you know, moving around, uh, this is meant to prevent chafing or hurting the actual wearer. So we're just going to be putting that in the texture and we just, you know, paint it on. Uh, I am using Krita, if you're wondering. Uh, this is it's the art program that I always use. Uh, I haven't used Photoshop in who knows how long at this point. Um, and I'm just experimenting with shapes and ideas. So I ended up going with this weird, almost fluted, uh, flowery thing for the uh, nasal crest area brow and um, this was a mistake uh, we'll see it on the model later um, but I should have accounted for it possibly stretching you can see uh, the breastplate I kind of modeled it off of a um, classical breast here we're adding uh, articulated lames and its rivets we're just doing all the detail, detail on this one overlay layer. And this is just to get an idea of where uh, flutes or detailing like this is. And then we move on to a new uh, overlay layer, the second, and we switch to a textured brush. And on this layer, we are just going to use white. And we're not going to put it too heavily because we want it to only really highlight areas. So anywhere where there's going to be, say, a shadow, or if it's be underneath something, you don't really uh, put anything. So we're just going to be brushing it very, uh, well, looks like frantically and wildly. But uh, if you bleed onto areas that you really don't want it, just switch to the eraser and erase away. Uh, however much you want. So we're not going to be using any 
we're not darkening anything on this particular layer. We're only brightening. Uh, of course, if you're using Photoshop, you could use the uh, what's it called, Dodge and Burn tool, which uh, unfortunately Krita doesn't have. So, using the overlay is mostly what I use. You want to accentuate those sort of flute areas by erasing. Uh, and it's a lot of fiddling when you're hand texturing. And it is certainly a lot easier with a uh, drawing tablet. I use a Wacom 1, which uh, has an actual display so I can actually see what my texture on there so I don't have to look on the screen and try and guess where my hand is. Then we switched on to another overlay layer where we just painted it all black and then we're just gonna go in with the white after and brighten it up and figure out how we want it to sort of look. It's a lot of feeling uh, what looks right I guess when it comes to hand making the steel textures especially for me uh, I it, it's, I just eyeball it all the time. I It's sort of a loose system. Of course, you can also darken the steel by duplicating the base color layer and then having it multiplied and having it uh, its opacity. And you can just do that. Uh, I think I was uh, trying to figure out something and got my brain back in. And we're just gonna, you know, go over the entire thing. It's okay if you go over a little areas, you can always just darken it again. But of course, you're gonna have to figure out how dark you want say areas like the lanes. I'm going with a pretty dark uh, transition between each one and brightening areas up. So you can tell it's a lot of fiddling, trying to figure out how bright you really want something. You know, just, just go at it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be your Bob Ross, essentially. Happy uh, metal things, honey metal she machines, I guess, happy metal machines, words, uh, so that's pretty much most of this particular layer in the process, um, you get it to how you want it, and then you make a duplicate, which you are then going to uh, sharpen because you want it to increase the intensity. I don't know. And then I always lower it to like 69, 68 uh, opacity. And then I use another overlay layer where I add highlights to areas where I want it to be a little brighter. If it didn't, if it wasn't able to brighten from the sharpening of the last layer. As you can tell, it's a little too dark in some areas and it's a little too grainy. So I then just go over to the original and then just mess around. And this is the point where you just try and figure out uh, how much to darken, how much to brighten. Like I said, it's a lot of feel. You, you, you kind of have to know what you want. Let's see, I'm increasing the intensity of the rolled edges. I'm also darkening some areas that I think should have been darker, or more clear. Uh, moving any potential uh, grain 
Then I made my dupe good, sharpened it, did all that. And then uh, I sharpened the uh, last highlight layer and then lowered the opacity to however I felt was necessary. And then I saved it as a BMP because that's what I have the texture set to in the uh, materials. And here we have the model. As you can tell, the uh, the way we I decided to do the brow uh, looks it doesn't look very good. Um, but I mean, this is a is is just a nonsense model. It's not going to be released anytime soon to the public. It's not going to be part of my mod. It's not part of uh, the Ardenian. But as you can tell, it. It's gonna come out decent. And yeah. That's, that's pretty much most of the process for texturing. And it's kind of similar for how I do leather, except it's like two or three layers at, at most. Um, overlay mostly. But uh, yeah, that's kind of it. Um, and I guess to give a few things, I am going to eventually do a, uh, video covering, say, all the n new designs for the Art of the Nine, which is going to actually be releasing relatively soon, once I send over the general model, the standard general model, to, um, the strats guy. Uh, I'm not doing the strat models because I can't figure it out. I don't know how to convert them. So, or I try, I technically know the process, I just can't get it right. It They tend to explode. But yeah, all I have to do is just send him the model, uh, import it in, test it a little, and it should be ready within maybe a few days. I don't know. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I'll. Sorry, I didn't upload for very long. And uh, I guess I'll see you guys whenever the hell I see you. Maybe in a year or a few months. Maybe in a week. Maybe a few days. But we'll see. See ya.